Now the next gene involved in the operon concept is the operator gene. So operator is something which lies adjacent to the structural gene and it is, look, uh, it's, uh, it is a DNA segment at which the RNA polymerase is going, uh, is, uh, uh, it is the segment of DNA which, uh, which exercises control over the process of transcription. So transcription should take place or should not take place. It means to operate this structural genes is the function of the operator gene. It exercises control over expression of the trans, uh, expression of the gene or to say transcription to occur. The, now there is a substance called as repressor we'll be talking about. So it's a chemical. That's why these two things are mentioned here, types of genes and chemicals. Now there is a uh, molecule called as repressor. So a repressor substance of the regulatory gene has the affinity for the operator gene. So binding of the repressor with the regulator prevents the RNA polymerase to form initiation complex. In other words, we can say that the operator gene works like on and off switches in the protein synthesis. So the regulator, promoter and operator genes, they all function together and are called as the control gene. So the operator lies adjacent to the structural gene. It has direct control over the transcription and the formation of the protein. It is, it's, it is switched off by the presence of the repressor and repressor comes from where? Regulatory gene and the inducer can take away the repressor. So as long as this repressor is attached to the operator gene, you can see I have mentioned here, uh, in, if the inducer is absent from the picture, then uh, this gene will undergo transcription followed by translation and finally a repressor molecule is formed. This repressor molecule will attach with the operator and as long as it is attached here, the machinery is switched off. But in the presence of inducer, you can refer NCRT for the clearer diagram, which are colorful diagrams also, same diagrams. So what is inducer now? Inducer comes from the outside. So it is available in the environment. And once the inducer comes inside, it will join with the repressor molecule. Now a repressor molecule has two sites for attachment, one site for operator, second site for inducer. Once the inducer attaches there, the three-dimensional structure of the repressor molecule is changed. Now it is no more able to join with the operator. So now operator will be made free. That's why let's read once again. Operator lies adjacent to the structural gene and directly controls the synthesis of messenger RNA over the, trans over the structural genes. It is switched off by the presence of a repressor. An inducer can take away repressor and can switch on the gene that directs the structural genes to transcribe. So now what is promoter gene? The promoter gene is located adjacent to the operator gene and it is the DNA segment at which the RNA polymerase binds. Now if you remember we have done transcription unit so in that there was a structural gene and then it had a promoter and then a terminator. So promoter is a similar thing. So it's the promoter at uh, promoter site at which the polymerase enzyme, RNA polymerase enzyme will go and bind. Now uh, next point you can remember is that initiates the transcription of the structural gene. It controls the rate of the messenger RNA synthesis. The main site in promoter is the site where it will, uh, uh, at which the polymerase enzyme will go and attach. Uh, there is something called as cap site also which is missing in the NCRT I will be discussing in this class. So the next is the regulator gene. Now, the regulator gene is the gene involved in controlling the expression of one or more or you can say one gene or more than one genes. So the, uh, this includes both molecules. Now repressor is going to be the negative controller and inducer is going to have the positive control. I, a few minutes back I just told you that uh, whether you talk about the inducible operon or repressible operon, it, both of them are under positive and negative control. Negative control is done by a regulator gene which uh, stops its function. So the molecule formed by such a gene is called repressor. And the molecule made available from outside which is able to switch on the concept is called as the inducer. So this has a positive control over inducible system and this has a 
negative control. Now, let's check these things from the other notes. Uh, now, NCRT says that there is always a low level of expression uh, now inside an E. coli. The bacterium, remember that for every living organism, glucose is the priority. If glucose is available, definitely no, no organism wants to digest lactose or digest any other food because it's the instantaneous uh, mechanism of obtaining energy, burn glucose itself. So as long as glucose is available in environment, the E. coli will not start lactose machinery. That means lactose metabolism will not start. That means as long as glucose is present, there will be hardly any lactose to be metabolized. But remember, some amount of expression is always going on. That's why NCRT says a low level of expression is always there. So that's why... Uh, the gene Y, which causes the formation of the lacto, uh, which causes the formation of permease enzyme, because this gene is functional. These genes are functional to a very low value. That's why there will be always some amount of permease enzyme. That's why the permease enzyme will always allow the lactose to enter inside if it is available in the surrounding. I hope this point is clear to you that how first lactose enters inside. So the reason is a very low level of expression of this uh, operon continues always. It cannot be completely switched off. So this will cause the entry of lactose into E. coli due to this activity. Now permease activity is to allow entry into cell, galactosidase to digest it and transacetylase is for detoxification by metabolizing the toxic thiogalactosides that enters along with the uh, lactose because of the permease enzyme. Reason is there are many other molecules which are quite similar uh, in their structure to the lactose that's why this enzyme is unable to distinguish them and will cause sometime harmful molecules from surrounding to also enter inside.